Uh, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much as well. I'm really glad to be here. Um, hi, Andrew. It's great to meet you. It's our first time meeting face-to-face uh, -face virtually. Um, yeah. So before, before diving into this conversation, I had a lot of questions I want to answer, so I want to get right to it. But um, first, I thought it would be helpful to mention this very actionable piece of, um, of information uh, in case people listening don't know already that Bandcamp is waiving um, its transaction fees again. Um, so they waived their fees um, for artists back in late March, and I believe it was over 3 million paid out to artists um, within 24 hours, um, which is really impressive. And now they're doing that again on the first Friday of the month um, for the next couple of months, um, including this Friday, May 1st. Um, so if, you, if, if all of you don't know about that already, it could be a really good time to um, bring your fans and audiences to your Bandcamp page if you have it. Um, so uh, first off, first off, how are you personally, Andrew? Just fine, thank you. You're good. <laughs> it's, it's very strange, but uh, strange for everyone. But um, where are you uh, calling from or speaking from? Yeah, I'm in Berkeley, yeah. California, in my house. Okay, cool. Um, and so, how? So to start off on a higher level, I know that um, yeah, Bandcamp has been doing this amazing um, service of waiving its fees for artists on select days, but in general. How do you think Bandcamp um, has been impacted by the pandemic? And is there anything in the day-to-day -day operations of a company that you think has changed significantly? Um, I'm, I'm particularly thinking about how a lot of sales on Bandcamp come from merch, like whether it's physical merch or um, physical formats like vinyl records and CDs. So if you could speak to that. Yeah, sure. Well, prior to the pandemic, I think it would have been a surprise news maybe to a lot of people that over half of the sales on Bandcamp were actually physical. So obviously predominantly vinyl mm -hmm. with CDs and cassettes and things following behind, but also t-shirts, books, posters, you name it. Um, a uh, cast iron pig was even for sale for a thousand dollars if you want to buy one for some weird reason, mm -hmm. don't know. Uh, but yeah, uh, physical sales are actually were over half of uh, the sales on the site. Um, and I think that uh, a lot of our focus for the year was on enabling um, artists and labels to uh, sell more physical stuff. The arrival of the virus, obviously, uh, we don't want mm -hmm. to be encouraging people to be doing things that endangers their lives. And obviously, just practically speaking, mm -hmm. it's difficult to mail things from Germany to Australia or, or wherever, wherever you're at mm -hmm. right now. So. Um, I have been speaking to a lot of labels. A lot of people are still trying to do, you know, business as much as you, uh, 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 business as close to uh, normal as possible. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of people are, you know, canceling releases, moving things back. So we're here to help if people have uh, questions and if there are fulfillment issues we can help with and that kind of stuff. But in general, um, I think, uh, you know, the focus has shifted slightly towards um, back to the digital, just maybe temporarily. We'll see. We, none of, mm. Nobody knows, right? If somebody here on this call knows how long this is going to last, please let me know. <laughs> but for now, <laughs> yes, some of, the, some of the plans we had. I mean, you know, we recently launched a um, vinyl crowdfunding uh, mm. mm -hmm. service uh, and um, had to at least temporarily put that on hold because part of the service is that we fulfill all the orders that came in from fans um, uh, for the band that um, crowdsourced their vinyl. We don't have any way to, you know, ship uh, vinyl from, a, um, from our warehouse right now because we don't mm -hmm. want anybody in danger. So things like that um, have been on hold, but hopefully um, as things start to, uh, flatten out and become safer, we can we can get back to uh, some of those things. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, yeah, so the next question I had in mind, um, I think, yeah, I think it's still relevant to ask, even in the current climate where, yeah, I agree that I think the focus is shifting a lot more towards digital, at least temporarily, um, versus towards physical. But um, what I've noticed, so if you look on, on the macro level, what's happening on the recorded side of the music industry, um, for several years, according to reports from uh, like the RAAA and IPI, uh, physical and digital music sales have been declining, whereas um, on-demand streaming, the likes of Spotify and Apple Music, that's been growing and that growth is accelerating. And um, as of around like 2014, 2015, 
brought the record industry back to a state of growth. Um, I'm wondering, at least, uh, I guess, from your perspective working at Bandcamp, do you think that macro trend where people are shifting from um, physical sales or, I guess, one-off transactional sales to streaming in the aggregate, do you think that trend has impacted Bandcamp at all or um, caused them to shift their priorities or goals at all um, pre-pandemic, as in independent of the pandemic, um, and why, why are we not? So um, for us, our, our goals have always been the same. And fortunately for us, our trends buck what the rest of the industry is up to. So for us, all sales across the board are up. Digital and all fam formats of physical are all up. Um, digital sales are up. Um, not at the rate of physical sales on Bandcamp, but they're still very much in the positive. And physical sales uh, are up double digit numbers um, for as many quarters back as I can see. And I think it's because Bandcamp has become a place for the Uber fans to kind of congregate mm -hmm. and nerd out and buy music and tell their fellow uh, Uber fans why they bought a specific piece of music and show off that they bought the limited edition green cassette or whatever, whatever mm -hmm. it is. So in general, I think we're attracting a different type of fan, a fan that really wants to engage and um, uh, hopefully similarly artists and, and labels too, that really value that relationship with their fans. Mm. Cool. Yeah. And I've uh, to bring it back, I guess, to, to the current moment, I think the, the first day when Bandcamp waived their fees for artists, um, it did really underscore a wider trend that I'm seeing just among music fans, um, which is interestingly like a shift back towards buying music or buying directly from the artists themselves, yeah. um, which is interesting in comparison to some rhetoric that I've seen in the media um, over the past year that uh, streaming has quote unquote saved the music industry. Um, but I think at least, especially in this time, artists are looking for, um, you know, for, or they're looking to direct fans to channels where they can earn money more quickly as opposed to waiting a month or several months for, for royalties that might amount to, you know, pennies or dollars um, and where they, yeah, where they like own that relationship more. Um, I'm, I'm wondering if you've noticed that shift as well in terms of people leaning more towards buying versus streaming. Yeah, absolutely. It definitely seemed like the penny dropped on that as mm -hmm. we got closer to that day for sure. Um, sales, as you mentioned, were through the roof, the 15 times the, the uh, size of a usual Friday, $4.3 million mm. dollars in 24 hours. Mm. Um, and since then, the sentiment has stuck around. Um, even, uh, you know, an average day is way up on what it used to be ever since mm. we did this. And I think somehow we captured a little bit of um, uh, artists um, being stuck at home and, and realizing that their uh, normal isn't going to be going out on the road and selling merch and doing stuff and they're having, you know, they're uh, forced into uh, making music at home and, and that to some, to, for some artists might be kind of exciting. So we've seen actually quite a bit of new music, you know, made uh, under quarantine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and we're seeing, thankfully, um, fans come along and say, I, I will buy this and, and maybe I'll buy this artist back catalog too. And, and um, mm -hmm. you know, maybe I'll buy this as a gift for a friend of mine as well. So they're, they're uh, of definitely, I, I think artist signups and I think fan signups are both double where they're at prior mm. to that date and have been every day since, which is kind of interesting. So huh. yeah, I think for some reason the penny dropped at like, oh, I get it. I can, streaming is convenient but it doesn't have to work in a way where mm. I'm just renting the music and such like I can actually pay the artist and the artist gets paid directly and mm -hmm. you know, gets that money uh, much quicker. And so, yeah, I think, I think for a lot of people, uh, they figured it out. Yeah. And I, th I think there's definitely uh, an emotional reason for that as well. Like people are just craving more direct human connection um, yeah. and Bandcamp or similar platforms are just one of many ways to facilitate that. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I want to shift uh, because you're, you're involved with uh, Bandcamp's editorial as well. And I've um, been following the Bandcamp daily in particular for a long time. Um, I personally really enjoy the work that they're doing in part because I, I appreciate the focus on um, music outside of the mainstream. Like there's like a really consistent focus on like the most unexpected kind of niche communities and scenes that pop up on Bandcamp. Um, I was wondering if you could speak first uh, 
to like what to what Bandcamp's editorial philosophy is like today. I'm interested in both the blog um, and their weekly podcast as well. Sure. And whether that has shifted in this current moment or if it's stayed consistent. So uh, Bandcamp's lucky in a way in that we've been profitable since 2012. So mm-hmm. any editorial decisions we made are not based on ad clicks or you know, mm-hmm. revenue that we can drive from specific pieces of editorial. And, you know, it, 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 editorial has always been um, based purely on, do we like this? Is it interesting? Is there a great story here? Can we mm-hmm. relate that story to um, music fans on Bandcamp? And so that's a freedom that um, uh, we relish, you, you know, often, uh, well, I shouldn't speak about other blogs, but obviously we don't have to rely on gossip stories or things that, you know, will get your, uh, your, your clicks rates up. Um, we can literally just write about music that we like, which sounds obvious, but really, you know, um, and we, we try to be as broad minded and, you know, leave no stone uncovered, but there's always something new, which is the good thing. And we're also Mm -hmm. equally trying not to be, as obscure as possible, having said that, you know, some of the more uh, well-read pieces on Bandcamp tend to be from, you know, the craziest nooks and crannies on, on the site. So one of the, you know, most well-read pieces from last year was the electronic music scene in Iran. Um, there was a story mm. on a punk scene in um, Russia uh, where these people were living in pretty extreme conditions. It would take like a month to, to get to their town on foot, but the kids there got together and were making some pretty cool punk. Mm. And, you know, it's about the story and it's, do we like the music? And if the answer is um, yes, and the story is great, well, we'll definitely cover it. Um, not much else has changed. I think it for the, for the weekly, um, I would, I'm doing longer shows. Uh, mm. I just felt like, you know, previously try to keep it to like a 90 minute listen. Seems like if, you know, during the working week, you can squeeze out 90 minutes somehow listening to the bank count weekly. That's cool. Mm. But I've found this sort of freedom in, uh, this time of isolation. I'm just like, well, why don't I just make a three hour show? Like people are just at home. Mm-hmm. You know? Oh yes, yeah. <laughs> obviously, but uh, and that's been great. It's been really fun. Um, other than that, I think Bank Camp's definitely over the years become a, a great place for people to do um, charity and um, uh, awareness raising mm. type mm-hmm. releases. And obviously right now there is a glut of those. And we cover what we can, but we can't cover everything. It just physically isn't possible. So, you know, sort of bearing that in mind too. Um, uh, but, but, but really, uh, it, thankfully, nothing has changed. It literally comes down to the principles of do we like it? And is there a great story? Mm-hmm. Great. Let's shine a light on that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I did want to ask about um, the relationship of things like the Bandcamp Daily or Weekly to the music media landscape, which is itself, um, yeah, really precarious right now uh, because of a lot of the reasons you mentioned, particularly the fact that the media as a whole is very ad driven, um, you know, like standalone media platforms and um, seemingly every like music or entertainment trade publication at least um, has faced layoffs or furloughs in some way. Um, I'm, wonder- I'm wondering, one, do you, do you see um, outlets like Bandcamp Daily or Weekly working in relation to or alongside those kinds of outlets or like how, how do you, could you like talk more about that connection and um, whether you see Bandcamp playing a role potentially in like new or future models of music journalism or do you see those two things as separate? I mean we're, part, we're all part of the same ecosystem and I think that if you are a music nerd you don't just rely on one source um, to get mm-hmm. your info um so you know i've read a variety of music blogs and that's what i think if i kept it narrow then um i don't think i'd be as uh my you know insatiability for new music i wouldn't w- wouldn't be um taken care of so um i'm not you know we have plans to roll out uh different flavored Bank camp weeklies right now it's just a show that i do mm, uh, yeah hopefully um within the next few months 
um, there will be some more, you know, band camp radio shows of sorts in different music, covering different musical genres, which is exciting. Um, we had some other plans that have been slightly scuppered due to the virus, but hope to get back on track by the end of the year for other ways in which we can um, uh, shine a light on, on music. I can't really say because that would spoil the surprise. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, there's definitely more that we plan on doing. Um, and um, otherwise, it's, it's, it's literally all down to that simple formula again. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, now to talk about more like practically how artists and labels or anyone else can like best set up their Bandcamp pages, um, mm. both like now and also for the long term. Sure. I'm wondering, are there any common myths or misconceptions that you've seen come up um, in your conversations with artists and labels in terms of what works or does not work on Bandcamp? Ooh, sure. Well, first of all, um, if you go to bandcamp.com slash guide, there is a really handy guide there. If okay. you're mm -hmm. this. Also, if you happen to be someone running a label and you want to contact me, just andrew at bandcamp.com. We have a, uh, a new uh, deck that we just put together for labels. I'd be happy to share it with you. Mm. And both of those include kind of good tip, best practice type stuff. Um, I think, uh, let's see, what's the quickest and best? You, you know, realize that um, it's not just a storefront. It's not um, mm. a page where someone goes and they buy something and it's a site and you can also buy a bunch of other stuff. L we really do think that music is art and your page is literally your representation of you. So yes, you can upload the music and mm. put the track titles in and set a price and call it a day, but the more effort you put in, the more likely fans are to react. And mm. um, it doesn't take much, but uh, you know, why'd you make this album? let us know. You'd be surprised mm. by the number of people who don't even put a description of what their album's about. Yeah. Um, tag it correctly. I know it's amusing to tag your metal record as children's music, but that means <laughs> you miss out on all the people looking for metal that week and all the newsletters that we send out to fans of metal. Mm. Um, if you are able to sell merch, because we sell so much of it, make sure you put it up there and include really great pictures of it. Sometimes people will just re-upload the album artwork when there might be like, a crazy cool, you know, splattered yellow vinyl. Fans want to see that stuff. Mm. If I buy your crazy cool splattered yellow vinyl, that image appears in my fan collection, which is public for everyone to mm. read. And I might become like a little advertising node for you. So take the time to just do the little extra things. We're not selling tube socks or toothpaste. We're selling art. It's, it's your opportunity to really, um, you know, uh, make your page look as good as your music sounds. Mm. Yeah, the, the, just hearing that makes me realize that uh, a lot of the culture on Bandcamp is almost like uh, collecting. Um, and the fact that, yeah, like as a fan or as a um, consumer buyer, you have your own page and it's almost like the digital analog of uh, a record shelf. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, I think a lot of people don't, um, uh, they underestimate the viral sort of snowball effect that fans have. Um, when mm. buying on Bandcamp. It's not just mm -hmm. direct to fan. Direct to fan, D to C, whatever. If I come and I buy your record from your site, that's the end of the story. But if I buy your record on Bandcamp, yes, it goes in my collection and people can see my collection, but also I have about 5,000 or so fans following me as a fan. And so those 5,000 mm. fans will get to know that I just bought this new record. They'll know because it's in a weekly email that we send out. They'll know because we have this thing called the music feed, which is a roll up of all of the activity of all the bands and the labels and the other fans that you're following. And um, they may have also opted in for text and, and what are the ways. So um, either way, some of these 5,000 fans um, that are following me will then go, oh, that record's great. I didn't know about it. I'll buy that record. Mm -hmm. And then those fans will have fans following them and they'll do the same. So there's this nice snowball effect that happens on Bankhead that you don't get with just regular old D to C and it's because mm. of the community. And um, you have crazy fans who have thousands of releases in their collections and they've written, you know, oh, I love what they do with the guitar on track six and you know, they really get yeah. into it. And that type of stuff is, uh, is great. Yeah, it's like walking into a giant record store and saying, hey, what's new? and a bunch of fans that you really uh, admire their taste and a bunch of your favorite artists and labels all turning around saying, well, have you heard this? 
which is mm -hmm. great. Yeah, and I, yeah, it's that that kind of organic spread is definitely um, it makes sense given the, a lot of Bandcamp's audience consists of like more loyal fans as opposed to just casual fans. Sure. Yeah, yeah, as you would see on a streaming surface. Um, I see there's some questions in the chat that I just want to address quickly. So, um, someone asked whether Bandcamp will um, will or already does let artists post direct support or donation links on their profile. So uh, like the way that Spotify has this partnership with PayPal and Cash App, um, is there anything similar on Bandcamp? Um, I mean, every time you buy something, it's going to the artist. So there's that. Sure, sure. But right. There's yeah. no uh, donate that kind of circumvents the idea of supporting them via their music at this point. Okay. Um, that's actually, yeah, conceptually interesting to think about, like whether that would be necessary. Um, and also that's, I guess, one um, one feature of Bandcamp that I think is great and that I like personally think there should be more of is the pay what you want model. Sure, um, yeah. I think I think that's in part why the tipping feature on streaming services is, is interesting because normally people don't have that choice. Whereas with a lot of cases on Bandcamp, you do have that choice. Yeah, it's up to the artist or label to enable it, and a lot do. And over 50% of the time when you do enable it, people will pay up, oftentimes double what you've asked for. Mm -hmm. but, you know, when we mm -hmm. first enabled that, we actually um, had to get in touch with a few fans because we were seeing um, people give a hundred or a thousand dollars for a $10 album. We're like, did they just put the decimal point in the wrong place? Right. And, you know, obviously once in a while that happens, but most of the time it's like, no, I, you know, I love this band. I couldn't get to see them when they played in my town last week. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to say, you know, how much I liked them. And so I opened up my wallet and gave a little more. So, yeah, I think the all pay more is sort of our, um, our answer to that. There have been, like I said, charitable releases that have come along and, you know, we've kind of kicked around the idea of, well, could you, is there a way to add that? But, you know, our primary business here is connecting fans with their bands so that they can support via music. And um, I don't know, things, things may change, but for now mm -hmm. it is what it is. Cool. Uh, makes sense. Yeah, thank you for the question. And then the next one is related to another question I had in mind, which is um, related to what Bandcamp adds for artists from a marketing and outreach standpoint that isn't available um, say on a streaming service like Spotify in terms of like reaching out to bands, letting them know about um, things like new releases or concert sure. dates, things like that. So this person, um, Jeffrey asked specifically, how, how often do fans choose to be added to artist mailing lists? Um, I don't know if you have any information on that, but um, yeah. I know that that's like definitely a benefit of Bandcamp too. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, actually, you know, in addition, there's several things going on here. So uh, if you put a, a new record on Bandcamp, um, uh, and you tag it correctly, then obviously you can be discovered by the community via all of our discover tools. Mm -hmm. um, and so if you haven't been to the Bandcamp homepage, fans can come along and they can search via uh, um, a genre, a subgenre, um, a format and location. So if you happen to be in love with indie music on cassette from Brooklyn, well, you can search for that kind of stuff. So mm -hmm. you make the music you know, searchable in ways that it's nice and deep for those that really want to nerd out and get into the types of genres and subgenres they might be really uh, enthusiastic about. Um, we also send out newsletters, hundreds of thousands of newsletters every week according to genre. So when you're a fan, mm -hmm. when you sign up, you pick a genre and favorite subgenres and you can follow those genres. And we will email you every week a glomp of new releases that you may or may not know about. Also things that we've covered in editorial that fall underneath those genres, great looking merch from that genre. So mm -hmm. they'll just happen to go out every week too. These are all things that you can, that just happen without you doing anything. Um, also artists can recommend music from other artists that they like. So if you're in a couple of different projects and you're collaborating or you're going out on tour pre or, pre or post virus, uh, you can recommend your tour mates bands and things like that. And those types of releases will also show up in interesting places for fans. Mm -hmm. um, you can also message your fans directly. Um, you can do this now from desktop as well as the app. Um, and also Bandcamp obviously sends out new release notifications, which, uh, and this is brand new mm -hmm. too, um, you can actually add 
uh, little bits of information to. Pr previously, we just sent out an, a message that said, hey, such and such, and such just released this new record. Mm -hmm. Now you can actually add a little message to those emails too, mm -hmm. um, as of, I think, last week. So that's new news. So, um, uh, sorry, does that answer all of the questions or was there another bit that I missed? Like I, um, I guess the, uh, and I, I realize that we're running low on time, so this might be the last question. I think the specific one was, um, I guess, how often are fans opting into artists? Oh, right. Sorry. List? Yeah. So, um, uh, I don't know the, the exact uh, uh, breakdown on that, but um, two things. If, you, if a fan opts into your mailing list, on your tools page as, a, as an artist, you'll find your mailing list. You can download it add it to your MailChimp, do whatever you got to do. That number is probably always going to be smaller because there are less people that want to sign up for those types of emails than the number of people that you can message via Bandcamp. Um, mm -hmm. Using the Bandcamp messaging service, you can message anyone who's bought any of your music at any time. Those are just parts of the, you know, that's, that's the terms of service of signing up for Bandcamp. So mm -hmm. messaging folks directly from your, from your, uh, from your uh, desktop or from the, uh, from the artist and labels app, um, you can message a lot of people and you can see the difference if you were to log in and you could see, oh, I have 5,000 people on my mailing list. And then you, you go to the community section uh, of your artist page, you can see, oh, I have 8,342 people I can message here. So, mm -hmm. uh, and if you send a message via the dashboard, um, via, sorry, the community tab, again, that goes uh, out as an email, um, it goes into the fans, app um and also they may have opted in to receive a text so it's like a three-pronged mm -hmm. cool great uh, i think that's all the time that we have um but thank you so much i really enjoyed this conversation yeah thank you thanks for the questions chat.